Hello, Drew here, Mountain East Los Angeles, and this is a video uh, in response to what a very stupid politician said about a famous American, Paul Revere. And I'm going to be reading from Charles Kettering's World War II radio broadcast on Paul Revere, called Twice a Patriot. Nearly every American, I believe, remembers the poem that begins, Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere on the 18th of April in 75. Longfellow, through that poem, has kept alive the name Paul Revere, and 170 years later, a great many of us will pay respect to a great patriot. Most of us remember Paul Revere as the man who rode through every Middlesex village spreading the alarm. There's not many who are familiar with his other accomplishments, while not so spectacular as the Midnight Ride. They were in the long run probably of more value to the American people. As a boy of 13, Paul Revere was apprenticed to his father, a silversmith in Boston. An apprentice in those days spent seven years learning his trade, and at the end of this period, he was not expected to do any other kind of work. He became a lifetime specialist in a trade he probably didn't have much to say about. When the American Revolution came along, Paul Revere found the colonial army in great need of gunpowder and cannon, not silver tankards and teapots, so he immediately turned his abilities to the war effort. Revere, naturally, had a good knowledge of metals, Today we call it know-how. Special knowledge and skill are always valuable assets in any emergency. So the government asked him to build two gunpowder mills and later he also cast cannon from iron and brass for the American army. Paul Revere and Eli Whitney were the two men who first brought to the attention of the world the fact that industry is very versatile and a most valuable national asset in both war and peace. After the war was over, Revere turned to his trade of silversmithing. However, out of his experience in the war work had grown a desire to continue experimenting with alloys, heat treating, and casting metals. So, in 1788, he established a foundry in North Boston. This plant had the first smokestack in the city. And out of this foundry came all kinds of things. Household hardware, anvils, hammers, spikes, cogs, and even 400 bells. These were some of the tools used in the building of America. This foundry, being in the north end of Boston, naturally brought Revere into close contact with the shipyards. Right after the revolution, the shipbuilders had a hard time getting sheet copper from England for the bottoms of their ships. The shortage was a great handicap to the young industry. One American tried to get around this by just leaving the copper off, but after the ship had been at sea for a short time, it became so covered with barnacles that even with a strong wind, it would travel only about two miles per hour. Copper sheathing seemed to be as important to ships as sails. Although he was well over 60, Paul Revere thought he could find a way to roll copper sheets and meet this urgent demand. And so he started his research project, work on a project that had far greater results than his midnight ride. In 1801 he wrote a letter to a member of Congress which said in effect, it's the universal belief that no one in this country could make copper so malleable as to hammer it hot. I determined if possible to find the secret and have pleasure to say that after a great many trials and much expense, I've learned it. In that year, at the age of 67, he built the first copper rolling mill in this country at Canton, Massachusetts. And the interesting thing is that 143 years later, this company is still rolling copper sheets together with aluminum and magnesium, and a direct descendant of Paul Revere is still in business. Out of Paul Revere's mill came sheet copper that went on the bottoms of many American ships, including the U.S. Constitution. 
copper for the boilers in Robert Fulton's steamboat, and the sheathing for the domes of the State House in Boston and the New York City Hall. As one writer says of the early American patriots after the revolution, others had talked louder and longer about the new America they were planning to build, but Revere made the largest contribution to it. Today, as after the American Revolution, men and industries have again turned from war to peacetime pursuits. Soon we shall be resuming our task of building America. And from Paul Revere, we can learn this lesson. America's growth has depended largely on individuals. The man or woman who, like Revere, recognizes a job to be done, a problem to be solved, and is willing to devote the great amount of time and endless patience necessary to achieve this goal. So, thanks. That was another radio broadcast from World War II by Charles Kettering quite a prolific inventor and engineer himself. So that was Paul Revere, one of our leading Americans, certainly a patriot and industrialist. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Learned something at least. And see you all later and have a good day.